Hello guys, welcome to Top Anime Sensei. This video is the continuation video after Labyrinth Siege. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start, please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. The visible signs of fierce battles suggested that this floor must have been a troublesome one as well. One of the commanders attempted to make contact with the local forces. What is the situation? He asked quietly to the guard, trying not to wake the resting soldiers. It's a mess. We underestimated the demon lord. What do you mean? On this floor, the traps are dangerous. We're standing in the right passage. Don't go anywhere else. I think we've destroyed most of the traps, but there may be some that still work. Got it. By the way, he asked for more details to report to his superiors. The soldier then told him about a number of chemical weapons that had not been employed even in the Empire's own country. Tasteless and odorless gases that burned the eyes and throat. A shower of neurotoxins and acid. Vicious traps that would entrap multiple people. They had always thought that their knowledge of these things had been their own exclusive domain, so this felt even more threatening now. No monsters will appear from this floor for a while. Instead, golems powered by magicules are roaming about. Trouble is, they seem to have a self-repairing function, and it took us a long time to completely destroy them. I'm sorry to hear that. The commander wanted to say that they had had a hard time too, but he swallowed his words firmly and urged on. Yeah, the tired and wounded are resting on the 55th floor. Once there, it will be safe enough to have a meal. Thank you. So, where is the front line at the moment? The front line, A. Eh? According to what just came in, they are at the 60th floors. They also said some pretty unbelievable things, and I'm sure the higher-ups will think I'm crazy if I give them a report like this. Even so, do you still want to hear it? The soldier answered with a sigh, and as a unit commander, he had no choice but to nod his head. Yes, please. Okay, well then, apparently there is a huge humanoid weapon reigning on the 60th floor, and the strength of that thing. The more he heard, the more ridiculous it sounded. Even if a rank warriors formed a mob to challenge it, they could not even grasp a clue of how to conquer it. The body was made of magisteel, and physical attacks such as swords and guns could not penetrate it. Moreover, it was always covered with a barrier and even the magic cannon would not work against it. There was nothing they could do, that was the current situation. Later, voices were heard coming from the giant golem, but it was such a surprise. They said it sounded just like Master Gadra. I couldn't believe it myself, and now I have to report about it. I can't stand this, I really can't take any more of this. The soldier concluded with a complaint. The commander decided to report it to his superiors and ask for further instructions. We can only go forward now. Let's go to the 55th floor first, and then we will discuss our future course of action. Yes, sir. At such times, the only response to a superior could be yes. The commander did not have an alternative plan, and he did not object to this approach. However, this was only a postponement of the problem. An answer had to be given in the not-too-distant future, but in any case, there was no such thing as withdrawal for the Imperial Army. Are you going? Well, it's only natural. Good luck to you all. But before you go, I forgot to give you one more piece of advice. There are five special monsters that have been found. Be careful. Special monsters. Yeah, no one's reported any successful kills yet. They are definitely unique monsters. They're very nasty and have killed a lot of our men. Those five were a red slime, a golden skeleton, a ghost-like reaper, a living armor just like a heavy knight, and a small yet powerful dragon. Those fearsome monsters seemed to hide and lurk throughout these floors. They were unique presences amongst the golem hordes. The soldier told the commander for the last time that he should expect death if he encountered even one. The survivors from the upper floors took this advice to heart as they moved forward. It would only be a little while before they truly understood what lied ahead. More and more Imperial Army generals were descending, unaware of the death that lied before them. That line continued on, unbroken. Labyrinth, floors 61 to 70. Still no victory. I'm sorry, it seems that we have failed this time as well. Hearing this report, the generals despaired. There was a huge gate on the 70th floor. It was the border between this world and the city of death. Imperial soldiers walked through the labyrinth, advancing their way through a swarm of dead spirit monsters. It was all good at first. That's right, only at first. The monsters that appeared were all dead spirit monsters. As long as the soldiers could get used to the smell of rotting flesh, the monsters were not a difficult enemy for an imperial general. The first thousand men secured the base. After confirming the appearance of the followers, the decision was made to continue the operation. 
The loss of contact with the ground forces was a large blow, but they were not completely isolated. They judged that there was nothing to worry about, since the following soldiers would arrive in due time. The Imperial troops overran the upper floors of the building at a furious pace. On the first day, they had completed the search for almost all of the 61 to 69 floors. The problem lay in the 70th floor. For some reason, the 70th floor was a hilly area where all the grass and trees had withered away. The ruins of the battlefield were horrifying and filled with an air of death. At the end of the hill, there rose a huge gate, similar in size to the Great Gate on the ground. The gate, made of skeletons, was located in the center of the wall that surrounded the castle town, and was the gate that protected the walled city. The question on everyone's mind was why such a thing was in the labyrinth. The city had no entrances or exits other than the main gate. Drainage facilities, service gates, and all other facilities considered necessary for daily life were missing in the city as well. It was no wonder that city was inhabited by the lifeless. They were all immortal undead. On the first day, the great gate remained closed. The soldiers had tried to break it down, but the walls were very thick. The immortals kept coming out of the gate to repair it, so the sabotage was slow in progress. Even if they tried to approach the wall, they would find a skeleton archer with a bow on the outer wall. It was decided that attacking with a small number of men would be troublesome, so they waited for the reinforcements to arrive. Then came the morning of the second day. The number of the imperial troops had increased to over 10,000. As they set out to attack the gate, the gate was opened without a sound. There appeared a white king of great misfortune. To say that he was a skeleton was not right word. Those pure white polished bones spoke in fluent human language to the soldiers of the Imperial Army. Welcome to my kingdom of death. My name is Adalman, the immortal king. Let us have a good time. Shall we begin? As soon as King Adalman announced himself, the space was overcome with a sense of oppression. Following the king was a dead spirit knight and a death dragon that still boasted much majesty. The evil roar of the dead dragon was released with a force that crushed down on the entire space. And from the sky, the death dragon descended outside the gate. It was the moment when the deadliest dragon, the most supreme of the dead spirit lineage, bared its fangs to the imperial army. And that was not all. The great gate was fully opened and the army of immortals appeared one after another from within. The Death Knights led by the Death Lord crawled out one after another. The Imperial Army, which had been lined up in front of the gate, was thrown back and forth by the sudden start of the battle. The Death Dragon was a monster classified as special a rank and boasted a fearsome strength that required advanced preparation in order to defeat it. Its attribute was immortality. The only way to destroy it was to attack its soul directly. The soldiers of the Empire boasted of their high combat ability, but they were helpless in the face of an opponent whom their attacks could not touch. Retreat. We can't win this war by fighting in the dark. Damn it, then fire, burn it all down with fire. No, it's regenerating faster than it's burning. Get out of here now, or else the miasma will destroy your spirit. The Imperial Army was in turmoil. The dragon's jaws opened wide as if to taunt the soldiers. Oh no, that's too well. The body is corroding. The death dragon's corrosive breath poured down from the sky above, showering those crawling on the ground with it. As a result, most of them failed to resist it and died. And that was not all. Those whose minds were contaminated by the Death Dragon's miasma became zombies, obeying the orders of the higher beings. The higher being here was the mighty king, that is, Adalman. The damages of the Empire led directly to the increase of Adalman's strength. This tragedy of the Imperial Army was not the only one. Even those who had escaped the threat of the Death Dragon were not safe. The Death Knights began to drive the fleeing soldiers on death horses. The Imperial Army quickly dwindled in numbers, and in less than an hour 10,000 men were wiped out. The devastation was passed on to the next few survivors. With this, the battle for the 70th floor began in earnest. After the second day, the Imperial Army had attempted to enter the 70th floor many times. Each time, however, they suffered a painful defeat. The second and third attempts were similar, and the situation was not improving at all. Not to mention, there was the overwhelming threat of Death Dragon. Although there were only a thousand or so of them, a death knight was an opponent for whom neither fatigue nor death existed. Moreover, the threat level was very high, a minus rank. They regenerated even after being defeated, which was unbearable. The death lord who commanded them was on par with the top-ranked warriors of the imperial army. Even in terms of quality alone, they were superior to the imperial army and their ability to continue fighting overturned any disadvantages they may have had in terms of numbers. 
In addition, Albert the Death Paladin, one of the Elite Ten, was under Adalman's command. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched my other videos then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forgot to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.